I'm 33 years old and I swam with sharks and I've been to space. I deactivated the bomb just three seconds before it exploded. I've been to prison. I was even attacked by a zombie once. And I've been at the top of Mount Everest wearing high heels. Virtual reality has made me unstoppable. By now, most of you already have tried virtual reality, but for those who haven't, let me tell you it's really cool. It allows you to live experiences you've never even dreamed of by putting you in the center of any world, any adventure, any reality that you can imagine. And when you are there, it feels so real that you feel present, and it feels the truth, and you can help but let emotions flow. For more than five years now, I've been a member of an innovation services company, and I've had the chance to witness the explosion of emerging technologies from the inside. In all these years, I've had the chance to collaborate both with top brands in creating really cool, immersive campaigns, but also in projects aimed at implementing innovation in social matters. Needless to say, the most rewarding ones are the latter. And the impact they have on people and the results that you see confirm that virtual reality is capable of help bringing a social change and, as such, give us hope for a better future. Through virtual reality, for instance, you are able to witness the realities of other people's from a very unique point of view, oneself. Imagine for a moment that you are getting old, and for some reasons, things are starting to be confusing. You forget about important things, like, should have you taken any pills today? Which way is home? What is it actually that you live? Or even, who is that little girl sitting across, across the table that calls me grandma? You guess right, I'm talking about Alzheimer. Now imagine that on top of that nonsense that you are living, your family starts acting strange. They ask you to do things they never used to before. They are worried, of course, even a little bit annoyed, or even angry, just because they don't know what the heck is happening to you. We joined forces with Alzheimer Research UK, a team at Google, in a project called A Walk Through Dementia, where we search for a solution for families and carers to better see and understand what the person suffering from Alzheimer is going through. The key is understanding Alzheimer not only as a memory loss, but as a dementia. It affects orientation, which leads to confusion. And it even disconnects the brain and the senses, like hearing and eyesight. Until now, it was really difficult to be able to properly explain and therefore to properly understand these symptoms. But now, and thanks to virtual reality, we are actually able to put people in the shoes of someone living with dementia. To do so, we built an app and recreated three everyday scenarios and showed the symptoms that pose challenges to a person suffering from any kind of dementia. The impact of the project was so welcome, it was so good, that actually Bupa Healthcare is using it to train their carers in private residences to be able to see what their patients are going through and therefore be able to offer a better help. The fact that through virtual reality we can witness other people's realities allows us even for a greater challenge, the quest for real empathy. Empathy is innate in us. Our brain is capable of mirroring the emotions of the person that we are observing. That's why we empathize. We feel other people's emotions. We live in a world more connected than ever, and any story can spread through the world in just a matter of seconds. And actually, uh, when tragedy hits the world, as we've seen too much and too close lately, there's a huge outpouring of online messages. That's because we empathize. We all run and share it and have our say and change our profile picture and show our rejection, which is wonderful, but it feels so short. It vanishes so quickly. Through virtual reality, we can achieve a whole new level of empathy. Actually, many NGOs have been using virtual reality in order to create a greater impact in the people that come to their events by putting people inside the realities they are fighting against, for them to be there, for them to see it with their own eyes, to generate proximity, and from there, empathy blooms. Because 
Proximity is a key driver of empathy. There are four types of proximity. Temporal, spatial, probabilistic, and emotional. Which means that if something occurs closer to you, either in time or space, if you have some sort of emotional connection to it, or if it's more probable to happen to you, then it's more likely that that matter will raise your attention and that you will empathize with it. Actually, Cornerstone contacted us for a very unique and beautiful project. Cornerstone is a UK-based charity focused on providing a safe home for kids in the foster care system. They contacted us to make a VR short based on empathy and aimed at generating an emotional link for pa parents considering fostering a kid to find the courage is needed to make the lifelong commitment of adopting a child and providing him or her with a safe home and a, love, and a life of love. Such is the power of empathy and that wonderful the things it can lead us to do. But virtual reality is not only about sitting back and absorbing information. It opens a whole new world in terms of platforms and tools that we can build that can help improve our lives and break barriers that we encounter today. And actually, with that in mind, we build the first teleportation platform. Let me explain it. A hospital in Holland contacted us because they wanted to know if there was any sort of solution through emerging technologies to help long-staying patients be able to escape their rooms while, of course, they weren't actually able to leave the hospital. So, um, Current means of communication were enough, not even video calls. We needed to move from calling or talking to to being with, because isolation was affecting their mindset into a negative way, which was affecting the recovery process. Virtual reality and emerging technologies once again allowed us to go one step further. So what we did was to build a closed system where we placed a 360 camera in the home of some of the patients actually, like this little guy there. That camera recorded everything around it. And that video and that audio were streamed to a headset of VR glasses like the one you have there. So when patient, and then we gave it to patients. So when patients put it on, they were able to see everything around it. Now, remember that I mentioned that when you are there in the virtual reality, you feel present and it feels the truth? You can imagine the face of this little guy after months of being in the hospital to put the glasses on and feel home with mom and dad and even the little dog that just couldn't stop barking as soon as he heard his voice. He was absolutely happy. It was wonderful. And actually, the hospital carried on some studies and confirmed that by using this system, the patients were happier, and their recovery process was easier and faster. So once we saw the results, we couldn't just stop there. And what we did was to turn this closed system into an open platform for everyone to have access to it. Because these sort of platforms and tools are not only for these cases. In terms of education, for instance, um, online students can avoid one of the major gaps that e-learning has, which is the lack of group consciousness, the lack of cl classmates and colleagues. So through these sort of platforms, they can actually go to school. But again, we can go even one step further. Now imagine someone confined at home for any reason, for any condition, or even a prisoner, or again, a person that has to be hospitalized for a long time. Through these systems, they can actually keep on going to school. And that's what the use of virtual reality and emerging technologies for a greater good is all about. Technology won't make us better human beings. That's on us. But as a tool, it can help us improve our lives and break barriers that we encounter today. And as a mean of communication, it can help us fight apathy with empathy and proximity. Get us to open our eyes and see other people's realities, to get involved and to commit, as this is the key to trigger social change that can give us hope for a better future. Thank you.